Hi, I'm Chris Wadrop, Managing Director of Materials at CPI, and today we're going to be talking about alternative proteins in brief. So to understand alternative proteins, you, need, you first need to understand what's protein. A standard and traditional protein is something that we would typically get from animals, animal meat or animal products such as milk or eggs or cheese. Uh, other sources of protein in our diets today that we, we consume on a regular basis are from whole foods like lentils or split peas or grains uh, or other crops. All of these provide protein in the context of your diet today. Alternative proteins are a new class of foods that are coming forward and typically they fit into five different categories. One is a plant protein, but not in the context of the whole food that you've eaten it, more in, in a kind of processed food. So if you have a, a, a meat substitute, a meat alternative, like a burger or a patty of some description that's made from plants, uh, then there are insect proteins, there are alternative proteins in the context of microbes or fungi, uh, there is precision fermentations and proteins produced in precision fermentation that substitute things like eggs and milk, and then there are cultured meats, which are actually trying to reproduce the meat cell and the animal cell itself. The three kinds of alternative proteins that we, we support manufacture of in CPI are uh, microbial and fungi processes. There is the precision fermentation and there is the, the cell cultured meat uh, versions of processes. We work with companies to support all three of those. They are typically all based around some form of fermentation and it's a fermentation style process. Uh, humans have been fermenting stuff for millennia. Think of beer, think of kimchi, think of sauerkraut, uh, think of kefir. These are all fermentation processes that just sit within our diet on a day-to-day -day basis. Manufacturing bread is a fermentation process. It just doesn't seem like it or feel like it because we've been doing it for that many millennia. The alternative proteins of either bacterial fermentation, uh, fungal fermentation or, or cultured meat or precision fermentations are all just manufacturing processes that do fermentation to produce an alternative food source for inclusion in our diet. So cultured meat is one type of alternative protein that replicates the animal cell directly. Um, and this is done through fermentation processes. It can take hours, days and weeks to manufacture enough cells to produce a meaningful quantity of food, uh, depending upon the size of the vessels that this is done. Uh, the, today's journey starts at small scale in laboratories and eventually this will be done at mass scale in large scale fermenters, a bit like brewing beer but just a slightly different process uh, in multiple locations around the world. So when we talk about cultivated meat and the kind of cells that people are trying to produce, it's everything from crustaceans and seafood through to replicating pork and beef steaks. Um, the, the challenge is as much about producing the cells as it is about mixing the various cells together where you have meat and fats combining to produce those fantastic flavours that we would normally experience with a steak or a pork loin or a sausage. Um, but those, those, the science of combining those different cells and those different uh, flavours and constructing them to represent uh, uh, something that you would recognise in the shop as a steak or a sausage rather than it just being a pile of mush or on the side of your plate. That's one of the key challenges facing the science today. The environmental emissions associated with manufacturing food in today's food system uh, are quite significant. About 80% of the land area used to grow crops around the world is used to actually feed animals. That has a huge impact in, in, in overall emissions forgetting the actual emissions associated with, with the animals living on the land in the first place. Uh, to put that into context, typically if you're at the supermarket and you, you like steak, a nice sirloin, would typically come at about 200 grams. Within that 200 grams of steak, there's about 25%, so about 50 grams, maybe 55 grams of protein that we will use in our bodies to help repair our bodies and, and, and grow muscles. The emissions associated with that 25% or 50 grams of protein are uh, around 20 to 30 kilograms of CO2 in production and about six bathfuls, about 600 litres, six full baths of water to produce that single sirloin steak. Other factors that influence the, the, the sustainability of the meat we produce when we're growing the crops that we feed them are things like the pesticides and the fertilizers that get applied to crops and the consequential runoff into, into waterways and the impact that that has on the environment. So whilst people see a cow or they see an animal, uh, a pig, a chicken, they don't actually see 
the emissions that are associated with the supply chain required to feed that animal. So the food system's on a journey. We are not going to replace animals within our food chain. It just isn't going to happen. But over the coming years, investments will happen to establish these new technologies to produce more foods that will feed into the flexitarian market. They'll spread across the world uh, as the consumers start to demand and differentiate and include various different alternative proteins into their diet. So you might eat meat, but you might only meet two or three days a week instead of seven, as most people or most of us do today. Uh, and you'll start to feed in some of these alternative proteins into your diet. The taxation regimes around the world may change to support, but there is an incredibly strong farming lobby uh, that supports the animal, in animal food industry. Uh, we will see increasing numbers of these production assets and products on our supermarket shelves, uh, and that will start to form a bit of a social revolution that will slowly migrate us all to being flexitarians, consuming a range of different proteins in our diet, ensuring that we provide both sustainable, healthy choices for the planet and for our bodies. From reports that have been shared, industry expects something like a 90% reduction in carbon emissions associated with alternative protein production relative to the animal-based product production. So where today there is a 20 kilogram CO2 emission associated with the production of an eight ounce sirloin steak, in the future there would be something less than two kilograms of CO2 emissions for the same equivalent amount of protein. In September 2023, CPI opened the Novel Food Innovation Centre at its facility at Wilton in Redcar in the northeast of England. Here, we produce material to food grade standards so that the processes that we develop and the, the samples and products that get produced on behalf of our customers pass the quality standard required to enable you to ingest that as a client or, or as someone who wants to sample that product. This enables our clients to take the materials that get produced from their processes, the products that they're hoping to take to market, and actually incorporate them into recipes. The team at Wilton takes a very multidisciplinary approach, and we're out, we combine guys that understand the synthetic biology and the right strains uh, to use in the fermentation process through fermentation scientists who can optimize and develop the process through to the chemical engineers that can actually help you design your full-scale plant and have the confidence that that material has been produced with all the appropriate food standards and regulations in mind. And in our pilot facilities, even have the operating teams that can produce kilograms, tens of kilograms, or possibly even hundreds of kilograms of your feedstock and materials for sampling into your market. Alternative Proteins is quite a broad church of product categories, covering everything from plant proteins, insect proteins, microbial and fungal proteins, through to uh, mammalian cell proteins that, that are called cultured meats. Thank you for watching. That was Alternative Proteins in Brief.